I just figured since we're in the studio, we recorded one episode. Why not record two? Do it. Well, hello again. Welcome to Conversation with the Browns. I am Mr. Brown, and she is... Uh, Andrea? <laughs> I never know if I should say... I don't you just say go who by you Andrea, are. but you say Miss Brown. I feel like I should say Mrs. Brown. Well, I don't want to say Mr. because people call me Mr. And no, just I'm just saying Mr. Brown, Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Yeah, you can say Mrs. Brown. I am happy you're Mrs. Brown. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, with that said, thank you all for joining us for another conversation episode of Conversation with the Browns. And uh, we just recorded an episode, and we're in the studio now. The kids are with Nana and Papa, so I figure, hey, why not record two episodes? And this is a conversation. And some podcasts have a lot of notes, and me and my wife definitely work differently. Uh, I like to kind of just talk and not process stuff. She likes to have notes all kind of listed out. And so we don't have we don't have that. We just have a topic, and we're going to have a conversation about a topic, a topic a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people complain about. A lot of people are can't wait till it's over. But we're going to talk about the year 2020. Um, and I think, you know, even though it's been tough, I think it's okay to give 2020 a round of applause for whatever reason, whether you think you're happy because it's leaving, <laughs> which a lot of people are, or for whatever reason. So I'm going to give 2020 a round of applause. All right. Which is... Which is weird. And a lot of people would not give 2020 a round of applause. I've seen all kind of memes with people you giving. You know, sometimes you clap because you're just glad they're done. Yeah. I've seen a lot of memes of people giving 2020 um, what they call it, the uh, the one finger wave. California howdy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call it in California. <laughs> um, I have some thoughts about 2020. Um, I know you do. So we haven't really rehearsed this or talked about it ahead of time. But let me just start with this idea that when, when 2020 began, I had a lot of you know, hopes and dreams, a lot of energy. Um, and like a lot of people, we thought we were clever. We said my 2020 vision, right? I got a vision for 2020, um, running a nonprofit and having what we do with the Choose What program. I just had all these great plans, right? And then March rolled around after my birthday, things start shutting down. And, and I, we kind of thought, I thought, hey, this is going to be a short shutdown. Be cool. I didn't think it would be nine months. Um, I didn't think I had no idea. And we really don't know what this year or year will bring, but I didn't think this was going to happen. So ups and downs, kind of like an EKG up and down, up, down, up, down, um, probably more downs for more people, but I am naturally more optimistic. I'm naturally more just look for the good. Not that I ignore pain, but I typically look for the good, even in, even in pain. Like I'm looking for the best outcome I can. Cause I just believe I can build on that. It's hard to build on the negativity. So I kind of remain positive as much as I can, but 2020 kind of, you know, knocked the air out of me in a lot of ways. And I remember a comment you said was like, where are the people going to go? <laughs> Cause you're more of an introvert and you're like, I know you love us, but I remember that comment. You said the people aren't going anywhere. The people never leave. They never leave. Right. <laughs> We're in our homes. We're here. And which costs a lot of adjustments. So if I would give the year 2020 a title for me, it would be the year of opportunity, or I would say an opportunity for greatness. That's what I would give the year 2020. And I'll explain why put it to you if you had to give 2020 a theme one theme what would your theme be i don't know i'm gonna have to think about that and uh, yeah <laughs> maybe i don't know so maybe think about it. i'll explain why i said an opportunity for greatness <laughs> yeah tell me why an opportunity for greatness because it was so time. tough it, it, it's it no one saw it coming and like i said in a couple of videos for schools i work with you know i choose to thrive not simply survive and so i believe there's going to be winners in 2020. Some, hopefully we all make it out of 2020. Some people didn't, unfortunately. And the question is how will you make it out? Um, because when we face adversity, we can either go through, you know, thrive through it or get crushed by it. And I think the human spirit typically, I don't say typically, but a lot of times wants to thrive through it. Um, I was talking to some students recently and they said, why are you so optimistic? And I said, maybe it's because when I was growing up, I didn't have nothing. So I appreciate everything I got. The fact that 
we couldn't afford to have a basketball rim, a real one. So we took a milk cart, one of those big square milk cartons, a big one that carried all the other milk cartons, cut out the bottom, put on a pole in the, in the alley, and that was a basketball hoop. And then we, then we advanced. We got really good. We took the rim of a bike tire, put two of them together, taped them up, put them on a piece of board, put it on the pole. Now we got a, a <laughs> round basketball hoop. And so from those things, I kind of just realized I just look for whatever I could. And I, I like basketball, so last analogy, we didn't have those indoor Nerf hoops to put on the back of our door. So we took a wire hanger, opened it up, hung it in there, and pulled, balled up a pair of socks or two and made a basketball. We got a basketball hoop. So I just, I just always I just had that mentality to look for what I can do versus what I can't do. And so as, as we faced all this adversity in 2020, I thought it was a year for grades because how are you going to deal with this? Now, don't get me wrong. I remember making a video earlier talking about I want to come out better as far as my weight's concerned. I want to, you know, I don't want to sit around and just eat, eat, eat. I want to work out. And I did for a while, and then I didn't work out for a while. You know, so I see that ebb and flow. But I still have that goal to keep getting up. Keep, I'm, hey, I haven't worked out in three days. I haven't worked out in two weeks. I've been eating all of your uh, homemade sourdough. Your fault, right? No, my fault. <laughs> You're welcome. But I'm not going to give up. And so for me, because it was so tough, because in March we lost so much income, because all the schools shut down, our major source of income shut down, how am I going to adjust? And so for me, I think 2020 was a, an opportunity for greatness to overcome. And even if even if you didn't meet the goals you thought you would meet, the fact that you're continued trying is, is greatness because greatness doesn't happen when everything is comfortable. Greatness doesn't happen when things are just going your way. It causes work to happen. And even through the tough stuff of relationships at home, you know, We've had some tough stuff. We've had some things to deal with um, with our kids. Not that, and overall, our kids are great. But even those you know, seem to fight a little bit more often because they're always with each other. I thought the other day, if they were going to school, they wouldn't see each other for six hours, right? There would be this reunion, but they don't get that freedom anymore, right? The people don't go away. The it's people don't thing. go away. Um, but even seeing what comes out at the end of that or what's coming out, what lessons we've learned how they've grown, how they're learning to communicate. I think 2020 was an opportunity for greatness. So you think of any themes? I mean, there's other themes too I can come up with, but that's one of them. Well, my first thought was actually, I don't know. And I do think in a lot of ways that's learning to embrace the truth that there's actually a lot of things that we don't know being okay with saying I don't know I think a lot of times the pace of life is just so fast moving um, that it kind of you can kind of cover up um, stuff by just constant movement uh, and I think everything slowing down and um, being closer to home sometimes reveals some of those those cracks and I, so so I think it has been an opportunity to embrace not knowing to be real about the how much we don't really control yeah I think that that was one of the big takeaways especially at the beginning for me was just the reality of the fact that we we do a lot of functioning with this illusion that we can control by good choices and um planning and wait 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 what you just said, like we can control everything by good choices. That's my message. Like you make better choices, a better life. But 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 that's true. That we you it it has. I mean, yeah, for me at least, it has emphasized the fact that um, that doesn't mean that choosing well and planning is not an important part of life. Okay, but it is important. the reality <laughs> is that we don't by our choices actually control the world. Um, There is so much that really is outside of our control. And I think that in some ways that is, at least for me, that is freeing Um, because Mm -hmm. it allows me to focus on what are the pieces I can, maybe there are some things I can control. I can focus like how much effort I put in Mm -hmm. Um, thoughtfulness and care and showing up. Those are things that, that I can, but really outcomes, which is often the thing that we really think Mm -hmm. that we're controlling outcomes are really out of my control. There's so much about the world. Um, and even, you know, what happens in our own home interpersonally, the other person sitting across the table, I really 
don't control that, but being, um, so, so I think, and I think there was a freeing piece to me about the honesty of that and letting go of the results and being able to just, um, just do my best to show up for whatever life brings. But I think if I had to put a label to it, um, you before, you, before you put the label on, let me say, because I, I, the reason I interrupt you about choice is because I agree with you. Oh, I want the clarity because I think I just got some students asked me a question on Zoom call. They were like, do your choices really matter? Do little ones matter as much as big ones? You know, um, does it, all these things really matter? And I think they do. Even though I can't control all the outcomes, I can control how I respond to them. I can I still have that power to choose. And 2020 reminded me, me too, that I'm, I don't have control. I don't have control if a school shuts down. I have control if the government says, you know, we're, we have to do these certain things, wear masks, but I can choose how I respond to them. And so I think that's even powerful in and of itself. And so there was revealed to me as well that I don't control a whole lot. I thought I did. Like, I, here's my plan. Here's my choices. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And when I couldn't do X, Y, and Z, the only thing I could control was how I responded to those things versus simply reacting to those things and getting all upset. And I think a lot of people go there first, but stepping back, okay, I don't like this. I hate this. And then a lot of people spend a lot of energy focused on what they can't control versus what they can. And when they do, they lose control of what they can't control because they're focused on what they can't control. So I, I like the fact you brought that up. I just want to make sure I wasn't like coming across mad at you because you said that. I agree with you because even though I do speak about choices and how important they are, Sometimes we can't control the outcome. We control the effort we put into things. We can control the work we do, but sometimes the results are out of our control. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think so. That was a lot of controls. <laughs> so what, I'm sorry. So I just want to clarify. So what what is what theme that you come up with on the spot for 2020? Um, I think because you're making me come up with something right now, which I sort of <laughs> want to protest. But since you're making me come up with a theme, I think it's think small. Hmm. which is not, I I do think it's interesting. I was just like writing, doodling on this paper 2020. And I think it is sort of funny that 2020 just feels like a round number and like, you know, like it should be a big deal (laughs) and it should be a culmination of things. And I think in a lot of ways this year was just not at all what any of us expected or wanted or would have asked for. Um, it's kind of like a we blowing up a balloon and then it just the air just goes out. Yeah, it's just not at all what we were going for. And but I think that the thing that has been the theme for me is the value of small. I think that we live in a country that really likes big mm-hmm. and important. Um Social media has really contributed to that, to this, you know, be an influencer and everything being big, more followers, more views, more likes, more. um, And I think sometimes that bigness can cover up the lack of substance and depth and quality in our life. Um, And I think that I think that that to me would be the theme for me is the value of small and thinking thinking small and realizing that um, there have just been all of these ways where I realize sometimes the things that are most important to me um, really are only built in really small moments. And sometimes I think with all the bigness, I can get distracted and really easily think, oh, this one little small moment here, like that doesn't really matter. Here's the, I want to do something big. It needs to be big. And realizing that a lot of really important things only grow in small ways. Hmm. It's only possible. I mean, you think about plants and, you know, a lot of like the strongest, sturdiest, most long lasting trees are ones that grow in such small ways that you cannot see it. Um, It's just this, this really daily small, um, small faithfulness. And that's probably the other faithfulness is the other thing that's just been a big thing for me. This so year? do small things in faithfulness of your two? Yeah, or just think small. Think um, small. To be able to value, and so that's that's just something that has really shown up for me in all these little little ways, um, realizing the value of thinking small and trusting that showing up for these little these little things, um, the daily things really mm-hmm. matters. I think there's all these ways where, you know, so many of us being in our homes way more, um, being, um, what was, anyway, I lost my thought, but 
there's just all these ways where it has shown us like, man, now I, now I can't just shove stuff in the corner. I think there's been some of these like home organizing and that has become <laughs> so big because so many of us have been stuck at home, constantly staring at the little things that are really easy to cover up or paint over or, you know, when you're not there every day, but it has really made us realize where are the things that these are really important to me, but there's now a crack in this relational foundation or there's right. because um, a lot of the things that really tend to life give it the things that are most important to me, the relationships and um, home and community realizing, I mean, how many of us have, you know, been stuck at home and then realize, man, like how many I now sit in my, at my home and how many of my neighbors do I really have? Yeah. That you was know, a big good one. relationship with, or even know their names. Yeah. And I think, and, and it just shows up in all these, all these little ways realizing um, they're really there's some things that are really important to me that I don't I don't want to get crowded out when the la- when the world gets loud again um, when mm. there's when more distraction and more big is available to me realizing so much of what I really value in life is only built in small ways and I want this year um, to I want to you know end this year um, with habits that help me, um, build those things and main, maintain consistently so that when all this other opportunity is available, I don't lose the fact that those things can be fun when they're, you know, extra. Um, but big is not always better. Yeah. It, you said a lot that made me think about even like social media. Like, like, I, like I said in the last episode, sometimes I have the thought, you know, if I, not, if I can't do it big, I won't do it at all. And I think that's a wrong mentality. Like, you know, I, I probably bought into that from schools or not from schools, from like sports, you know, go big or go home. Well, guess what? Doing those small things matter on the playing field, whether it's football or basketball too. You know, rebound is not big deal, but it makes a difference long term. But as I was talking to a friend, um, Mr. Freeman, we're talking about doing some work next year. And he quoted back to me a quote. Like, I don't like when people quote my quotes back to me. <laughs> but no, <laughs> it, was, it was all good, Mr. Freeman. But he said... Um, you know, um, the quote I always use, if my output exceeds my input, my upkeep will be my downfall. And so some of the thought, some of the things you just said made me think about that. The fact that we are in our society sometimes just so go, 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 go. And then it leads to our downfall. But this pandemic has made us kind of slow down. And so one of my themes I want to look for in the new year is like remove distractions. And one of my favorite quotes is um, remove the unnecessary that the necessary may speak. The idea that I think 2020 has taught me another idea of being small, but what really matters and get rid of distractions. I mean, because uh, and we can do another episode about this, about the fact that we're homeschooling now. And I remember you mentioned before when we started homeschooling, uh, when I say we, I mean loosely we, mostly (laughs) you. Um, Evan says I'm the principal and I'm also the activities director or the gym, you know, whatever. But uh, I remember you said this before that realize when our kids go to school they would spend most of their waking hours away from us and there's some trade-offs like sometimes that's good like you know (laughs) just be real like it it can be like okay but we've got to see our kids and experience them in different ways um because of the pandemic because of they're not going anywhere the people aren't going away um and Maybe some of those things that we were doing before, not necessarily school, but some of the other things we're doing, maybe those are distractions from what really matters. And so I really like the fact that think small. I remember a quote that said, um, think globally, act locally. You know, it was a mission thing. But the the, the thing is, you can think big, but you got to do the small things, too. Those small things really do matter. And so I like that theme. And even though you came up with two, I like both of them. No, I only have one. Think small. No, you said something else. and I wrote it down. Hold on. You said another one. You said, oh, you said something about distractions and what, what's really important. Mm-hmm. I guess that's thinking small, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But as you were talking, I thought about another thing we've done before. And Devin accuses us of this theme coming up in every episode. What is mine to do? And I think that also has come out to me in 2020, you know, because being at home and maybe being on social media more often, you would get all of these calls from everyone else telling you what you need to do in your life. But I think all of this brought more clarity. I can't do everything. I thought I could before, but what is mine to do? And that just keeps coming up too. It's good. Any other thoughts? I know this was like a, I thought, I, I think you said some good things. 
Now I would be curious um, just what other people, I, I think I hadn't really stopped to, I'm, I only put a, put a title to it because you made me, but <laughs> I do think it would be good. Sometimes I think I resist doing that because I feel like, well, it needs to be really good or really profound. But I think just the practice of sitting here together and thinking through is really helpful. And it makes me curious, what are some of the things that other people, as they just reflect on the last year, what kind of title they would put to it? It doesn't have to be big or final or any of that stuff. Um, so how would you ask the question better than I did? Because I even forgot how I formed the question. Like I want, I need a title for this episode. <laughs> how did I, how do, how would you form the question? Well, you just asked me what I would title the 2020 if I had to put a give it a. If you title had to give, if you have your 2020 a theme, what would it be? Yeah. Okay, so we'd love to hear from anyone who's listening. What would your theme be for 2020? There it is. What would your theme be for 2020? Is that yeah, because enough? I think it's so interesting to me that in some ways with a global pandemic we all have. A shared experience but because of the way that it made our world so small so much has been shut down I think it also has meant that for a lot of us we're having very different hmm. experiences there's some there's a piece that is shared but some of the the things that have been both a gift and really challenging for us have been tied to the fact that there's all there's so many people in one house in a shared space. And I think for, I think of friends who are single, how this has been quite different, for a them. very different experience. Yeah. The challenges and what had has, what they've learned have been really different. Um, you know, homeschooling has been a big part of this season for me and for the kids. And that's not there. It's just, everyone's life is so different. Everything has have gotten small. Um, but there is this piece that, it's with a global pandemic. There is no one that has. Has been touched by it. Yeah. yeah. And so I think there is something great in a shared experience, but I would love to hear from other people. Cause I think even just with friends that I can think of, you know, we've all experienced this diff very differently. What it's brought out of us, what has really felt like a challenge or felt like a gift um, has been different for everyone. I think it's funny because what felt like a curse to some may feel like a gift to others and, mm -hmm. and vice, vice versa. And you mentioned single. I have a friend, Javon, who is single and got COVID early, early on. Uh, he was on another podcast of ours. But that experience of him being single with COVID can't go anywhere. And I think they were quarantining people longer back then because they didn't, you know, things have changed a little bit. But he mentioned to me, like, people would drop off stuff at his house and they wouldn't say anything. Until like they were like way, <laughs> they were already back at the crib. Hey dog, I've been over your house about thirty minutes ago. You might want to go check and see where that stuff is. Go look <laughs> you know? on your porch. Go look on your porch. We have stuff for you because they didn't want to have no part to open the door. Yeah. Even stand like people will come to the door now and stand far away with a mask on. But back mm -hmm. then they're like, I'm not get. I love you, but because I can imagine being single and going through that. So it, it's yeah. different. It's different shared experience, but also a definitely different experience of that shared experience. So, yeah, I would love to hear from you guys. And uh, I don't know if I have a radio voice or not, but I don't want to actually turn it on right now. I think I want to just kind of talk, but I would like to hear from people. And uh, we can hear from them many different ways. And one of the best ways is actually through our YouTube channel, because I don't know if you can leave comments on Apple Podcasts or not or Spotify. Yeah, you can? Leave you can? Oh, well, well, reviews. Rev hey, leave a review. Thank you. Leave a five star review. And if you don't like the, the podcast, leave a five star review. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we love to hear from you anyway, um, good, bad, or ugly. We want to get better, but we really want to know how would you, what, get, what would, how to ask the question again? If you were going to give a theme to 2020. What would your theme Call be it. for 2020? What would you title, theme? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Just tell <laughs> us what you think about 2020, but just don't be putting no middle fingers. <laughs> but hey, if that's how you feel, let us know how you feel. We'd love to get your feedback. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Conversation with the Browns. Again, you can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and always on our website at lifewiththebrowns.com. Can you say the can you say it again? Lifewiththebrowns.com is what you say. Lifewiththebrowns.com. Thank you. This was fun. Peace. Can you do a piece for me? No, I don't do it as good as you. It's kind of your thing. Oh yeah. Well, Evan said, That's "Oh yeah, cute. for us. Oh yeah." Well, I gotta do Sophia's too. Sophia. Oh yeah. Oh nice yeah. Too. Thanks for joining us, y'all. <laughs>